The Second World War was an era of tank technology breakthroughs, with various innovative designs being used in combat. The United States grew into a major tank power during this period, achieving success with multiple tanks or armored vehicles. However, beneath the glory, there were also many failed designs, including some astonishingly bizarre designs. Today, we will introduce the Wallace Jumping Tank. The designer of the jumping tank was a man named Henry Wallace. He proposed the design in 1942 and obtained a patent certificate in 1945. This tank was so peculiar that it can be considered to have no practical value, so it only remained on paper. Conventional tanks need to balance protection, firepower, and mobility, which requires compromises in many aspects. For example, the distribution of armor protection needs to be focused on the front, while the sides and rear are correspondingly weakened. In order to achieve stronger off-road performance, tanks need to use tracks, but the track structure is not so convenient for turning in the field. The jumping tank appeared to solve these shortcomings and took a completely different design approach. The jumping tank has a cylindrical hull, and in the butterfly-shaped top armor cover, there is a small rotating cockpit where the tank commander can observe the surroundings. Six semi-buried turrets are evenly distributed around the hull, each turret having a 90 degrees firing angle in its respective direction, forming a 360 degrees coverage of firepower. The weapons can be cannons and machine guns. This tank does not have a strict definition of front and sides. All of its sides are considered the front and need to face the enemy in any direction. Therefore, the cylindrical hull has evenly distributed armor. So how does this tank without a front move? The designer believed that tracks and wheels cannot adapt to many complex terrains, so he ingeniously designed a set of mechanical legs that can jump. The lower part of the hull is hollow like a donut, and there is a set of piston-driven mechanical legs with pistons inside. The mechanical legs can extend to lift the tank up and then retract to lower it back to the ground. Normally, we would think that this piston telescoping structure is achieved either through hydraulic equipment or mechanical gear structures. However, Wallace, who took an unconventional approach, used a combustion engine similar to a piston engine. By injecting fuel into the piston and igniting it, the piston is propelled, and this process occurs in a short period of time, rather than slowly rising like hydraulic equipment. Therefore, the tank may jump up. The up and down movement of the piston only solves the problem of lifting the tank off the ground. To move the tank, other steps are needed. When the tank determines its forward direction, the crew controls the mechanical legs stored inside the abdomen to extend and support the tank off the ground. At this time, the bottom of the mechanical legs is the only point of support that remains stationary. The mechanical legs are tilted to a certain degree in the direction of movement or the tank is controlled to move laterally to a certain extent. After retracting, the tank is placed back on the ground. By repeating this process, the tank can move forward step by step. The Wallace jumping tank has many unreasonable aspects. The mechanical legs in its abdomen cannot move too far in one go, otherwise, it will cause an unstable center of gravity when supporting the tank. No matter how it moves, the feet of the mechanical legs must be positioned on the center of force. Although the mechanical legs theoretically allow the tank to move, they may not work well on slopes or soft ground, and the movement process is too complex, making it impossible to achieve high speeds. Wallace proposed adding Euro stabilizers on both sides of the tank's center of gravity, but can it really solve the problem fundamentally? The Wallace jumping tank also has its advantages. As long as it finds a place to lie down, it becomes a fortress that spews fire in all directions, assuming it can make it to the battlefield. This astonishing design was granted a patent in 1945, but people could only view it with curiosity. Anyone with a little common sense would not approve of it, at least not with the current level of technology.